In our previous videos, we've built three separate, uh, totally different robot chassis frames. And in this video, we're going to select one of those frames that we've built previously and start building upon it. I'm going to go ahead and use the all channel build because it's probably the simplest of the three. And so we're going to start with that. And in this video, we're going to be taking and mounting some motors to it. So we've got some Neverest motors. These happen to be the 40 to 1 Neverest uh, motors. And we're going to be taking and mounting these with the, our face tap motor mounts. We have a few different styles of motor mounts to give you options. We have, besides this face tapped option, there is a side tapped option, which is useful when you want to mount the motor in the end of the channel or on the open side of the channel. And we also have a bottom tapped clamping uh, mount, which works great with these Neverest motors as well. In this particular video, I wanted to go with these, and we're gonna actually go ahead and use these in conjunction with some aluminum spacers and half inch screws. The first step is going to be to take the, the M3 screws that come with your motor mount and take your motor mount, put it on the face of your motor and rotate it around until the holes line up with the tapped holes on the face of the motor. I'm going to take a Phillips screwdriver and tighten that down. And you want to make sure that these are as tight as you can get them without stripping out your screws. That's good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other motor. Now that we have the motor mounts on our motors, um, we're gonna go ahead and mount them to our robot frame. And as you can see, uh, these motors are offset. So the shaft is not in line with the center of the body uh, because these are spur gear motors. Uh, so it's a spur gear box on there. If it were planetary, that shaft would be in center with the body. Um, and so that's just something to take note as you're building your robot. It's gonna, the body of the motor is gonna be more in one direction than the other direction. And I'm going to choose to have that go towards the bottom of my robot. Um, so the open side of the channel, that's going to be the bottom of my robot. So it's sitting here upside down. And I'm going to have that extra motor body hanging uh, towards the bottom so that I have more room on the top when I flip this around to mount the electronics and things, kind of get that motor out of the way a little bit. I'm going to mount it two half inch holes from, this, uh, from the end of the channel here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my couplers. Uh, this is a heavy duty six millimeter quarter inch clamping coupler. As you see, it's got four pinch bolts. It's super tough and it's also pretty large. So I'm gonna set it down in my channel first so that when I put the motor in place, the motor shaft is already gonna be going through that uh, clamping coupler. And then after the motor's all mo uh, mounted, I can go ahead and clamp that coupler down to the shaft. Uh, but that way you don't get into a situation where you can't get the coupler in because you're dealing with a fairly long shaft on these Neverest motors and a fairly large coupler. I'm going to be using half inch long screws here going through a quarter inch long spacer. And you may be wondering why we need a spacer in the first place. And it really comes down to the fact that these Neverest motors have a pretty big nub on the end here. And so we just need to space it off a little bit so that we totally clear the channel. Sometimes I like to use some additional channel or something that I can set my robot up on top of. So as I go through and mount things, I have a little bit more room to spin my hex key uh, around so I'm not right up against the, the work surface. I'm gonna go ahead and keep these screws fairly loose as I go to allow me plenty of uh, wiggle room, literally. Um, 
so that I can get these other spacers in easily. And then like usual, we'll go through and tighten it all down once all the screws are in place. Now that I have the uh, first motor mounted, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the other one the exact same way. <clears throat> all right, our motors are mounted. Our clamping couplers are spinning freely in place. We're gonna go ahead and pop in some bearings and put in our shafts. These are half inch OD quarter inch ID bearings and these are half inch OD D shafts. And so we're gonna just pop the bearing right into the channel. And you might wanna leave a little bit of looseness on the four bolts that are holding on the motor here until you get your shaft and bearing in place because that'll ensure that everything is perfectly aligned and then go in and tighten down those four bolts that are holding in the motor mount. I'm going to go ahead and, and position my coupler so it's about centered within the channel here, or at least so that there's space on either side. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other one. Snap in the bearing. Put in the shaft and you can rotate these uh, clamping couplers so you can uh, see right down the slit to make sure that you have your shaft in all the way. There we go. And then again, wiggle the, that little sh clamping shaft coupler to about the center there. And then you can go ahead and tighten down the four pinch bolts on your shaft couplers here. And before you go ahead and mount your drive wheels to the shafts, now is a great opportunity to go through and add some standoffs. Um, I've got some 1.32 inch long standoffs, which fit perfectly inside of our channel. They're designed uh, to match the inside width of our channel. And they are quarter inch OD, 632 tapped. And I'm gonna mount them as close to the shaft as I can without really being in the way. So I'm gonna pick a spot here and put it in. And this will just help increase the strength and rigidity of the channel. I always like to use these near anywhere where I'm running shaft through the channel because it'll just help make sure that the spacing is exactly what you expect it to be and want it to be. Um, and especially uh, as you get into bigger, heavier builds, if this were to be a 50 pound robot or so, you're definitely gonna be glad that you have that extra strength in there. It's gonna be a lot easier to get in here and access these now before we get the wheels on. So it's a great time to uh, pause and do that. All right, finally, we're gonna take our drive wheels. We're gonna throw some hubs on them and we're gonna put them on our drive shafts here. And then we'll have our drive motors, our drive shafts and our drive wheels all assembled on our frame. I have a few of our heavy duty uh, wheels here and a couple of uh, clamping uh, hubs here. These are the D hubs, so they'll fit great on the D shaft. And uh, they've been very, very popular since we first released them. I also have some half inch screws that I'm going to be using to mount these to the wheels uh, and some washers because the socket head uh, isn't very wide and it kind of spreads it out like a snowshoe on the snow so that you don't mar your plastic as much and so that it's uh, a more balanced force. You're spreading your force out over a greater area. All right, I've got a couple of quarter inch shaft spacers here and I'm just gonna put on two on each of the sh drive shafts. And then I can go ahead and mount my wheel and tighten down the pinch bolt. It's worth noting that if you have to back drive a motor like that to get it to where you need it to be, 
it's a good idea to make sure it's not connected to anything because essentially it is a generator at that point. So some motor controllers will handle that nicely and some won't like it very much. All right, we've got our drive motors, our drive shafts, uh, and our drive wheels all ready to go. In our next video, we're going to be mounting our free-spinning Omni wheels in front. Uh, I'll see you then.